It's official, we're sending people to Mars, and this 20-year-old is the first in line. Hi, I'm Alyssa Carson, and I'm going to Mars. Keep watching for the full story of Alyssa and why exploring Mars is important for all of us. She's only 20 years old, and already Alyssa has been put on the fast track to learn as much as she can about Mars. Why? Because she's going there. Why do we need to go to Mars? The idea of going to Mars really gives us a whole lot of benefits. You know, Mars is that baby step in learning how we are going to live on other planets, which we will eventually have to figure out how to do. So we're going to be learning about Mars, but the ultimate goal is to terraform it so we're able to live there one day. The end goal is to turn this rusty planet into this, a fully livable ecosystem, just like Earth, a place where plants can grow into green, luscious habitats, a place where water flows through rivers, a place where animals can call their homes forever. And a place you can call your home too. But how could this be possible? And who exactly is Alyssa? Let's find out. Alyssa was born on March 10th, 2001 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Her dream to go to Mars started when she was just three years old. I first got interested in space um, when I was super young and really our best guess as to what sparked that was actually a cartoon. So when I was younger, I used to watch the Backyardigans and uh, there was an episode where they all went to Mars. So this really first got me talking about Mars to my dad. It seemed that Destiny was calling her to Mars and she wanted to be the first person to do it. From that point forward, she worked hard to make it happen. When I was younger and having this dream of wanting to be an astronaut and go to Mars, it wasn't something that was realistic. You know, no one was talking about Mars. It wasn't something that I could achieve. But I realized that if it was something that I wanted to do, I had to put in the hard work to actually make it into a reality. I have gone to all of the official NASA space camps in the world. I've gotten my advanced scuba certification. And I've gotten my pilot's license. I was also the youngest to graduate from the Advanced Possum Academy. She worked on her health, she studied everything she could about space, and eventually, at just 12 years old, Alyssa was selected by NASA to discuss future missions to Mars. The next generation of explorers, first human to walk on the surface of Mars. Her dream was finally becoming a reality. What's NASA's selection process? Right, so the pretty much the way the selection process works. So you apply to the selection process because you're interested in being an astronaut. Let's say you get selected. Then you then go through a couple years of basic astronaut training, which all astronauts go to. And pretty much at that point, you're an astronaut candidate. That essentially means that you can be put and assigned on any mission. So whether that is a mission to the moon, a mission to Mars, whatever's going on right then in the space industry, maybe going to the National Space Station. And that's based on, you know, what your skill set is. Maybe they need a pilot for a mission to the moon or something something like that. So once you're assigned to a mission, you then train specifically for that mission for a little while, and then you get to go. But a lot still stands in her way. Space exploration is incredibly difficult. It comes with a lot of risks. What could go wrong? Obviously in space, a lot can usually go wrong. Some of like the bigger concerns for going that far is the radiation levels, trying to make sure that the spacecraft is actually built to protect the astronauts as best as we can. Um, so any signs that the astronauts would have difficulties with those signs of radiation levels, it's probably one of the bigger concerns. Um, everything else, you know, we're kind of used to flying to a destination. It's just making sure that the spacecraft itself is well tested, which it most likely will be. Most people think it's near impossible to pass all the demanding tests to go to space, but not Alyssa. Instead of giving up, she just worked harder. The biggest challenge for me was how physically demanding everything was. She taught her body how to breathe in an environment without oxygen. She trained in zero gravity. She learned to navigate underwater while being blindfolded. She even passed the G-Force test, and by 2030, she'll be the first woman to ever step on Mars. So, of course, with all of this passion and dream that I have of becoming an astronaut, there is a huge reality that I could not get selected as an astronaut. It's definitely a possibility. But, you know, uh, that's why I try to emphasize a lot, too, especially when I'm talking to kids who also have an interest of being an astronaut. You know, you have to be just as passionate about whatever other career that you're going into as well. So, the fun part about wanting to be an astronaut is that you always have a backup plan. You know, if you don't get selected, you already have a well-established career in whatever it is you were interested in. And so being passionate about that is so important. So, you know, my mentality, I really just want to contribute to the space industry in any way that I can using whatever it is that I'm good at. And so, you know, whether that is going to the extreme and studying and doing astrobiology in space or maybe just helping the people who do get to space and doing astrobiology from here. But it's wanting and, and enjoying, you know, both aspects of that. When did it all start to seem real? 
I think everything became more real when I was 15 and I joined Project Possum and the main reason for that was because before then I was, you know, going to camps, which any kid can go to, any kid can go to space camp and learn about space, but within Project Possum, being involved in these research campaigns, you know, that was something that was very special, you know, working with spacesuits, doing microgravity flights, these were things that were very unique and so that definitely was when I realized that I was kind of becoming a lot more invested and it was way more real of an experience. What would you say to inspire the younger generation? I would tell younger kids to really look for something that they're truly passionate about, whether that's mixing different interests or maybe looking into some non-traditional jobs that they can go after. It's all about telling people what you're interested in doing and then of course following your dreams and never letting anyone take them away from you. Alyssa is showing the world that no matter how impossible a dream seems, with the right mindset, support, and a lot of hard work, you can do anything. I think that the legacy that I really want to leave is making an impact in the space industry, but also at the same time, you know, inspiring kids and making a big impact on a lot of kids' lives, proving that they can really go after whatever their dreams may be, you know. It doesn't have to be anything space related, but being able to inspire this next generation of kids to go after whatever it is they're interested in. It doesn't matter if it sounds crazy, you can really be whatever you want to be and you can go after your dreams. I do think that there is some form of alien somewhere, some form of intelligent life. You know, the universe is just too massive for there not to be something somewhere. Depending on how close they are to us, that I'm not so sure. Um, you know, I do think that Mars, for example, has a good potential of having bacterial life, which we could call some form of alien. But I do think that in terms of like intelligent life, it's somewhere out there. Totally. So if there if there was a way for us to find some sort of bacteria on Mars, we obviously have to be extremely cautious. You know, it could be very similar to bacteria that we have on Earth, or it could not be. You know, there is a good possibility that is a different form of life. It's not the type of life that we are used to seeing. So obviously we're going to have to be very cautious and keeping it very separate from us so that way we aren't contaminating ourselves. I think that whenever I meet someone and they're, let's say, a flat earther and talking about how the earth is flat, I try to use a lot of those situations to maybe teach them a little bit about space or about the earth or, you know, anything that I can. Some of them are a little hard-headed and they're just not going to change their mind or listen, but maybe I can teach a little something in a few of them. I never saw this happening to the extent of having a lot of followers or anything that was never something that I anticipated or necessarily anything that I wanted. I was pretty much just wanting to share my story because I was doing what I loved and I thought it was kind of cool, but I definitely didn't think that this many other people would also think it was cool. <laughs> Um, I think that the following has, you know, of course positives and negatives. I think, you know, in one way there has been a few opportunities that have opened that have been really cool, but also at the same time, you know, some some people maybe don't think of it as quite of a good thing, and some people within the space industry may not think of it as a good thing, you know. For me, I just love the fact that I'm able to talk and inspire kids from all over the world, and I think that's what's most important, you know, regardless of what it's bringing to opportunities or anything like that, the fact that I'm able to speak and inspire kids is what's most important. In terms of sponsorship deals, I don't necessarily think that that's going to hinder my chances of going to space. You know, really uh, my reasoning for wanting to get involved with sponsorship deals is really to talk about space. I personally believe that we don't do anything in space without public interest. And so having larger companies, let's say Nike, Olay, or any of these mentioning space or talking about space, it gets the general public thinking about it. And now they're talking about it. And now space is cool and popular and trending. And so now more people are thinking, oh, you know, Matt Damon went to Mars, so now we can go to Mars. And so having that public interest is so important for the space industry so I think bringing that aspect to the public is re a really unique thing to do. Okay, I would say that my top three moments, um, one would definitely be my first microgravity flight, just being able to sense the feeling of floating and what it's like to kind of be in an unspaced environment. Um, the second one would definitely be the water survival experience, and the reason why that one was so special to me was because I felt like it was skills that I could use in every day and also connected to space. So it wasn't just about space, it was also, you know, something, a skill set that I could use, let's say if I'm in a car and we go into the water or something those like survival skills I could use on a 
day-to-day -day basis or if the situation ever occurred. And the third would probably be the more recent, which would be flying with the Thunderbirds. That was definitely one of the absolute coolest things I've ever been able to do. Never been in some sort of like fighter jet like that before. And so having that experience and feeling so many different Gs was the coolest thing ever. Don't forget that if you are truly passionate about something, you can totally achieve your dreams. And it doesn't have to be what you want to be when you grow up, whether it's a work goal or personal goal or any aspect of your life, always follow your dreams.